Hi again, everyone. Thank you for joining Utah Beer News for the latest in our one-on-one -on -one conversations with local brewers, breweries, everyday imbibers. I'm Tim Heron, founder of Utah Beer News, and my guest today is Jeremy Raganese, president of Uenta Brewing in Salt Lake City. Welcome, Jeremy. Hi, Tim. How are you? It's great to see you again. Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah, good to see you as well. Thanks for taking the time to talk with Utah Beer News. Um, Jeremy's uh, been kind enough to join to us. Yeah, you bet. Talk about what uh, what's new and exciting with Uenta Brewing. Um, and as someone with a distinguished career in craft beer, he's going to share some thoughts on the importance of American Craft Beer Week, which is set for May 10th through the 16th. All right, Jeremy, let's uh, spend just a couple minutes talking about you and you into brewing. You've seen a thing or two in craft beer throughout your career. <laughs> <laughs> Can you start uh, by just talking a little bit about how you got into the industry and the path that led you to becoming president at Uenta in 2019? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so my journey into craft beer uh, started through kind of an odd angle. I uh, was a partner in an advertising firm, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, when you know I was young in my early 20s, I think or mid 20s, somewhere around there, and had started a, a shop with some friends. And uh, in walks the vice president of sales and marketing at the time for Boulevard Brewing Company, saying they needed a radio ad. Um, so, with that, we uh, became their uh, their first agency for Boulevard Brewing Company, first official agency, and. Uh, started uh, with a, just a very simple one project turned into multiple years of doing point of sale and print ads and now to home and all kinds of stuff for them and, and working with their in-house creative department of one uh, <laughs> to be able to help assist them in their growth. And, and at one point in time, uh, we sold the agency and I was having breakfast with the, the VP of sales and marketing when he said that they were going to hire a director of marketing. And uh, he didn't even ask. I just said, when do I apply? Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a situation where I knew the brand uh, pretty intimately at that point and had established good relationships with everyone there. And uh, I just knew that, you know, it was such a, a unique time in the industry. And that brewery in particular was a, uh, you know, a champion of the Midwest and oh, represented sure. the best of Kansas City. So to be on uh, that team was exciting and new. They had just built an entire new facility, uh, you know, to be able to start the expansion nationally. Uh, at that moment in time, they had a total of eight beers they produced, four year rounds and four seasonals. And I seriously thought at that time that that was enough, you know, <laughs> that that was going to be the end. And, uh -huh. and we were way, you know, deep in it. And <laughs> I was just going to continue to grow that brand. And uh, yeah. about a year later, we started a, a trajectory of launching new beers about, you know, every 10 minutes, I think. So, <laughs> um, but it was great to see and great to experience that from the, the inside, because uh, at that time, you know, the industry was, was in its uh, high growth phase and, you know, being in the Midwest, we were a little insulated from that. So, uh, you know, I had a chance to kind of get the wider view, I would say, of what mm -hmm. the, the rest of the industry was going through and, Stayed there for about 10 years uh, and then through a, a merger with Duval Mortgat and, and uh, or an acquisition, I should say, through Duval mm -hmm. Mortgat. And, uh, they acquired Firestone in that time period as well. And, and we had to put together a national sales force and do a bunch of things. It was very stressful, but also very rewarding. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just found myself at the end of those 10 years uh, thinking maybe it was time to either go back into advertising or find something new to kind of keep myself moving forward. And, and uh, I got a phone call from a buddy of mine who had moved to Salt Lake to run Uinta, uh, who I had worked with and before. And he asked if, uh, he, if I would mind coming out and maybe helping out for a little while here on the marketing side. Um, they had a great team here already. So for me, it was kind of a, a plug in and see what I could do to assist. But uh, but honestly, after that, I fell in love with Salt Lake and sort of the rest is history. So mm -hmm. they've had uh, some changes in, in uh, the management team here. And I was approached about uh, joining as president after the gentleman that had brought me here uh, had left to go to work for the main brewing company. And, uh, and I said, sure, let's see how this goes. I was excited. Very cool. Nice. Yeah. That was yeah. probably a way more than you expected. No, no, answer, that's obviously. great. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the marketing background and the ad, ad agency background, uh, that's that's great to hear. And yeah, like you said, you've been at Uenta, uh, how many years now total at Uenta? Five years now. Five years, and okay, going on three as president. And uh, yeah, great. so uh, Uenta uh, started in 93, 
and perhaps much more than any other brewery, I think Uinta is rooted in Utah. What's the the mission statement or maybe overarching big picture objective for Uinta in your mind? Uh, you know, Uinta has always stood for the state of Utah, meaning, you know, our brand resonates with the, the residents of Utah, but we also export the idea of Utah and what we stand for here. We're a lifestyle brand, uh, very much tied in with the landscapes and the people and, you know, the, the wonderful aspects that uh, represent, you know, Utah as a, as a Western state, Intermountain West state. Um, but, you know, the, the things that have resonated with me for a long, long time specifically have been that we're a a uh, very sustainably minded brewery with you know earth wind and beer being the tagline for a long period of time because of the the first business in the state of Utah to sign up for the wind power program the Rocky Mountain Power offered and so you know i think a a, a mindful com- company for the environment a company that represents local uh, which local again can be defined as you know in state in my opinion and then from that standpoint uh, a good steward of, of the community and, and uh, you know, a business that represents, uh, you know, what we do very, very well. So uh, that's a long-winded vision statement, but, you know, our goal ultimately is to be the number one craft brewer in the state of Utah from both, you know, quality standpoint and recognition standpoint, those kinds of things. Yeah. Because honestly, that's, you know, that's the heart and soul of what we do and why we do it. Right, right. And uh, obviously, uh, some of Uinta's classic beers, uh, Cutthroat, Ale Ale, Hop Nosh, IPA, 801 Pilsner, uh, so many. All the beers that likely were among some of the first craft beers that really helped people get hooked on craft beer. <laughs> how, how has that brand evolved over the years? And how do you go about balancing the classics with uh, a steady stream of new beers that you're putting into the market? That's kind of a classic challenge for breweries that are considered to be the old guard of craft. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, I guess the legacy of our, our business is that we have, you know, made beers that are, are widely available. And, you know, people kind of miss the fact that, you know, they're widely available for a reason. They were popular beers to begin with. And ultimately, they're very uh, consistent beers in the market. We do a good job with our, you know, sales and marketing and distribution plan. And that's not a failure. That's a success story. And, um, you know, when you see our beers on the shelves and again they're still selling very very well that's a good thing the issue is that you know you always want to approach the new consumer or the coming of age consumer in a way that makes you approachable and a you know and relevant basically to that audience uh, relevance to us means hard seltzer today. Uh, we launched the Westwater hard seltzer last year and, you know, that market is growing fast and, and, uh, you know, to put a, a stake in the ground, even as late as we did relative to what was going on nationally, uh, still very, very important because again, those occasions when people are reaching for a beer or other products, they have a lot of options out there. And, you know, I would prefer them to choose a local option and something that supports jobs locally, mm-hmm. uh, something that really helps us sustain our business and uh, luckily we made a very good hard seltzer. So consumers adopted it quite, quite quickly. Uh, beyond that, you know, Los Angeles is a new brand for us. It's a lager. It's very straightforward from a, a beer standpoint. But the idea behind it was, again, to embrace the local community and share something that we all share in common, which is a little bit of that frustration when you go up into the canyons and you're stuck behind taillights all day. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, for us, that's a that's just a, a nod to our community and a nod to the people that, that drive our, our business forward. And the beer is excellent, too. So mm-hmm. that's the piece that, you know, it's not just a brand. It, it is actually a very, very good, very crushable craft beer. Sure. So relevancy is, you know, to where you are and where that meaning with the consumer and mm-hmm. to where, you know, the audience wants us to be. I'm still drinking double IPAs all day long. So <laughs> I don't know about what the rest yeah. of the world is leaning towards the lighter end of the category right, right. now. But you know, I've got a caravan in my fridge. It's waiting for me when I get home today. That was my next comment. I have a note here. Yeah. The two of your newer beers are just phenomenal. The caravan, like you mentioned, and then your, you. uh, Sonder, uh, double dry oh, hopped, yeah. double IPA. <laughs> Man, I just can't get enough of that. Those are two of my current favorites. Very cool. Well, to shift, shift gears a little bit, as I mentioned earlier, American craft beer week is slated for May 10th through the 16th. This is the 15th annual event and it really just celebrates local independent craft beer and you touched on that a little bit with just making sure that uh, uh, if you're going to choose something try and make it local Uh, the past 14 months have just been so challenging to say the least for small businesses and craft breweries uh, are are in that group 
Can you talk a little bit just about the importance of supporting local when it comes to craft beer, not just next week, but, but all year round? I, you touched on a little bit, maybe expand on just how important it is right now. Oh, uh, very happy to. Thank you. Uh, Craft Beer Week, uh, you know, when it started for the Brewers Association, and I remember back that far uh, when it did start, it was, you know, it was designed to be a PR campaign and really just promote craft beers as a industry while we were still less than probably a thousand breweries or 1400 breweries across the country. And the idea was there to shine a light on the industry and, and get people to visit their local craft brewery. And at that time, you know, the distance to your local craft brewery may have been 30 miles, you know, now it's probably, you know, less than five or 10 with 8,000 breweries in the country. So uh, again, the, the motivation is the same. They, you know, I think the Brewers Association would encourage everyone to visit their local breweries and visit the tap rooms and uh, just to understand that their presence in the community tends to, uh, you know, raise the, the community community up. It's a gathering spot. It's a place where people can go and hang out and, and touch and feel something that's made locally, uh, meet the people that are behind that. And, you know, it's it's the story, the age old story of, you know, the revitalization of places where, you know, perhaps things had been left behind in the past and uh, breweries come in and, and build an infrastructure and welcome people back to those neighborhoods. So that's such an important story. And, you know, from my standpoint, American Craft Beer Week in a broader sense, uh, you know, is about when you're out in the market, make a conscious decision to pick a craft beer that you, know, you haven't tried before and try a new brewery. And, you know, uh, I'm not ashamed to admit I drank a salt fire beer last night I'd never had before. So uh, the name big in Japan for salt fire, you know, I, I was <laughs> Intrigued yeah, immediately. Intrigued, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that that idea for me is the same. I want to try what's out there too. And I want to support the local craft brewers that I'm friends with or that I know, uh, you know, are struggling to make their ends meet. And for right now, especially, many of these brewers, you know, had to maintain their businesses under uh, extreme duress and really had not a lot of, of fallback position. I have packaging beer and packaging beer was what was selling last year. And, and I had, you know, areas that I could continue to move it still mm -hmm. hurt. Uh, you know, I still had to re revise my business plan in a very hard way uh, in a very short amount of time. <laughs> so, you know, I can't imagine what people that relied on their tapper and business. And, you know, I talked to our friends at Fisher and others and, mm -hmm. and they had to make so many tough decisions. Uh, yeah. And it's just, you know, it's heartbreaking when you spend all of your energy in a passion business and you see it, you know, go through that extreme amount of pressure. Yeah. Um, so from my standpoint, you know, go out, support local, because frankly, those are the people that, you know, also are, they're going to support you and whatever your endeavor is, and they're here for you and you can see them, touch them, feel them and, and have, well, don't do that physically. <laughs> Maintain your six feet distance, please. Exactly. But, yeah. Uh, the idea is you can you can be in front of the the maker of the uh -huh. product and, and uh, congratulate them on their success. Yeah, it's just been so neat to to see the resilience of uh, of the brewers and uh, the community too yep. supporting uh, the the breweries during this time. It's been it's been really cool to see. And uh, generally during uh, American Craft Beer Week, uh, breweries will offer special beer releases. They'll coordinate taproom activities. Uh, last year was obviously a scaled back version of a typical American craft yes. beer week. What's your, <laughs> what's your impression of this year's festivities? Uh, are we going to be back to normal? Do you think? Uh, as back close to normal as we can get, uh, you know, Utah luckily did have a, uh, you know, a period where I will say luckily we had a period where the uh, situation with the pandemic got very, very bad. And uh, luckily, we're now spending way more time outside. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the vaccination rates are going up. And here in Salt Lake, we're, we're looking pretty good, I think. So overall, uh, welcoming people back inside the tap room or in the patio area, things like that, it's it's happening. And, and I think most people are starting to feel comfortable with that. I know I am, which is good. And uh, uh, I do have my first shot. So I'm, oh, good. I'm, I feel invincible all of a sudden. And I, I see a lot of people thinking the same thing. Uh -huh. but, uh, but you know, that's, that's key. And we're welcoming people back with some special releases. Uh, we've actually got, uh, on Monday, two beers that we're tapping that were part of our R and D program, mm. uh, that were special dry hop. We've got a Los Angeles that's dry hopped with the pink boots society hop blend, uh, from this year. And then we've got a, uh, golden spike that is uh, dry hopped with an experimental hop to give it, uh, the hop itself is, 
uh, got characteristics of like strawberry and tropical fruit mm. and things. So it uh, gives Golden Spike a really nice kind of hoppy, hoppy wheat edge. Uh, and then on Wednesday, I believe we've got another special release that's coming out with Trader with the uh, New Zealand variety Montuica. Uh, that was used in our Tumeke tart. And it has a lot of real lime, juicy key lime kind mm. of uh, character to it. So those are three just dry hop varietals that we'll have special. And then there's specials going on with our, our retail uh, store and merch, things like that. And, okay. uh, so the week itself, we'll have some festive feelings here. I think they're actually run some promotions in the pub. You can win some prizes and things too. And uh, there's like a flight of beers. If you can guess what the beers are, you know, uh, that you've uh, win a prize to okay. take home, stuff like that. So, oh, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. Should yeah. be fun. Yeah. No, that's uh, I, I've seen a few breweries come out with, uh, with some of their lineups and it sounds like you went to, uh, Got some good stuff planned too, so that's that's exciting to see. Uh, how are you yeah. going to celebrate? What what are your plans? Uh, I'm probably going to celebrate in the way that I celebrate every week. I'm going <laughs> to have some. You went to beers at the end of the day, uh, but the 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 goal for me is uh, to thank everybody for coming into the pub and and to really just you know make sure that I'm available to to welcome folks you know in and just say that you know we appreciate their business because that's the most important thing I can do. Um, you know, I also will, uh, encourage, uh, anybody that I do see to, you know, take a tour of some of the other breweries while they're here. And, and, uh, we get a lot of folks coming in from the airport that stop by here, of course, on the right. we're kind of the first brewery or in or the last brewery before they head out. Uh, -huh. uh and so it's always good to, you know, be a, again, a good advocate or ambassador for Utah. Sure. That's a great point. As, as we wrap up here, aside from American craft beer week, uh, what should beer drinkers be keeping an eye out for when it comes to you in the next little while? Uh, just because you mentioned that you've got that new, new spot at the airport. Uh, how's sure. that, how's that going for you? Uh, it's going great, but it's been, you know, for those guys, very stressful too. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a situation where the airport itself, uh, traffic was down uh, relative to what it you know would have been in all the COVID protocols meant that they had to change uh, those routines. And it's a difficult business to begin with. And yeah. we're, we're actually not the operators of that location. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a partner that uh, operates that. And uh, so it, again, it's very, very stressful. And they're very experienced in restaurant operations in airports. Uh, but it's just, it's a totally different world for them. So, uh, yeah. but they're, they're learning to navigate those things. And now hopefully with tourism back on the rise and flights coming in and everything, it'll hit, hit the normal button soon. But yeah. from uh, our perspective, we're actually going to start hosting events again. We had put that on hiatus last year. And so there'll be some free events in our parking lot. We partnered with cool, the uh, outdoor uh, clothing brand. Yeah. Uh, there are some partners of ours already, but uh, they're also neighbors and good friends. And they're going to bring their uh, cool mule, which is a big truck that has a stage attached uh, or part of it. I should say not even attached. Uh -huh. It is a truck with it's a stage. Oh, cool. Bring that out. We'll have some live music in our uh, parking lot and uh, Nomad, our partner on the eatery here for the pub, uh, be cooking up some fresh different food varieties and of course beers flowing nice. and everything. So these are coming up on Saturdays, I think. Let me, I'm sorry, I gotta look at my uh, thing here. Oh, May 21st. Okay. I was going to say the wrong date, but May 21st is when those are going to kick off. So if you watch our social feed, you'll learn about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And other than that, I got to say happy uh, third anniversary, Tim. That's oh. a really well, wonderful you. achievement. Yeah. And, uh, you're a part of the community here in a big, big way because you help us share this kind of message and also really just uh, show great support for all the breweries here. And, and I can't tell you how much we all appreciate it. Oh, well, I thank you very much. I appreciate you saying that. And yeah, it's been a, a fun ride so far. I'm excited. Uh, this uh, little video series is something that we just started not too long ago. So you're a, an early adopter to this one. And I, I appreciate you taking the time to visit with us uh, for American Craft Beer Week. And uh, if uh, you'll hang tight for just one second, I'm gonna do a couple couple plugs for the site. Uh, as the, you might know, uh, we have an e-newsletter that goes out every month. And uh, you're welcome to subscribe there, utahbeernews.com slash subscribe. It's the, uh, got a lot of good news and notes from around the Utah craft beer scene. And if you prefer to listen to your beer news, I invite you to check out the Utah Beer News podcast. This is one we started in 2018 and recently surpassed about 50 episodes. Uh, so these are more in-depth interviews with brewers, breweries, and everyday imbibers who make the Utah craft beer community what it is today. 
Uh, thank you as always for watching, listening, and reading. If you know of a story that should be told on Utah Beer News, please fill out the form on utahbeernews.com slash contact or just email me directly. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. And one more time, I just wanted to thank Jeremy Raganese, president of Uenta Brewing, for taking the time to uh, join the virtual tap room here. Uh, what do you think? I loved it. Okay. Thanks, Any. I'm, I'm happy to talk about my favorite subject anytime. So yeah. appreciate cool. it, Tim.